Guys, it's day seven of Figure A 2020, which means week one is in the books. Well done for getting this far. Why did we pick life drawing of all things, such a difficult thing to do, and then decide to do it for a full month every day? I feel like, you know, we could have picked watching movies and ice cream and then just done that for one afternoon. But we've done this now for seven days, so we might as well finish it. Um, before we get to some of the drawings, and by the way, I've absolutely loved seeing all the drawings on Instagram, on the community area of our website. It just brings so much joy to me to see you guys are pushing yourselves so hard. Um, but before we get to feedback on some of the drawings, I just wanted to say a little bit about the censorship, you know, that we experience as life drawing artists. You've probably noticed that uh, Crocky Cafe can't post on their YouTube channel anymore. They have a Vimeo channel instead now, which is great. Uh, but we can't even link directly to the videos, the Crocky Cafe videos. We've been warned for that, which is why you kind of have to go off and find it yourself. Or on our website, there's all the links up there. Um, you may have noticed we never have had any ads on our videos ever, which is good in terms of the viewing experience, hopefully. You don't have to sit through some, some ad every time but it does make it really hard because we, you know, to, to fund the channel and to keep it going. Um, and so, you know, thank you to everyone who joined in our course last year. That is how we fund this whole thing. Um, and so you guys basically have allowed this whole figurey thing to happen, at least on Love Life Drawing. One thing I don't fully understand is the people who are flagging us. That's viewers, that's not YouTube and Instagram. That's people out there seeing this stuff and saying, hey, this is bad. And I'm like, why are you watching then? You know, like I, I don't uh, have an interest in like hair gel. <laughs> so I don't watch videos about hair gel. You know, it's, it's kind of been a strange part of the experience of running this channel. I guess I just wanted to share it with you a little bit. Drop it, Maggie. So onto the drawings, much more importantly. Okay, this was Gordon. And by the way, Gordon, thank you so much for being such a great participant in the community, giving encouragement to everyone. It's really, really cool. And lots of you guys are, are doing that and I love seeing it. I love reading all your posts and encouragement. The thing that I wanted to do here is firstly, the rib cage tilt, don't straighten out the pose. So um, let the rib cage be tilted back. And when, the, when things are fold, like, when something's folded, it's not as long anymore, right? So when there's this kind of fold, don't elongate the torso as if it wasn't folded, you know, and make it just the same length, but with a fold in it. You've got to shorten up the torso. Elongating the torso is a really common issue in life drawing. So what I did here, I, as much as possible, I like to not draw over people's drawings because that seems kind of like, then it's my drawing but just to move things around with the same marks if I can. And so what I wanted to do was rotate the rib cage, bring it down, shrunk the head a little bit um, and brought that down with it, of course. And then in the legs, I thought that there could be more flow in those legs rather than like, you know, two kind of fairly parallel kind of curves that are a bit symmetrical. Let's find these big S curves, let's find you know, big S curves that flow together down the legs. I, try, I put on the screen a couple of different uh, curves for the side of the leg and the front of the leg that might be helpful. Now, having said all of that, I absolutely love the drawing. I love, you know, Gordon said he needs more practice with the brush pen. I love the marks, the commitment, the boldness and the courage that went into the drawing. So we're gonna look at Nikolai's drawings. I hope I pronounced your name right, Nikolai or Nikolai. I love the fact, I can see that you're committing to your lines. I think you're using pen, which is a great way to commit to your lines. I can see that you're pushing yourself based on the lessons that we've been, you know, the tutorials. Um, and I think so many things are working great. Um, just, you know, like I, on this pose, I feel like you, you did push what was there, which is really cool. So one thing is I kind of lost a sense of the pelvis and often the bones of the pelvis are sticking out a bit. And even in a short pose, Getting a little sense of that, you know, we, I've, we talk so much about the pelvis being essential and just a little sense of that ridge 
on the bony bits of the pelvis sticking out because it's being kind of thrust forward, that is going to help give this sense of structure. And we're, we're, we're focusing on big gestural curves, but giving a little sense of structure within that it kind of anchors all that movement and flow. So, and you did, I think you got that in the rib cage. I can see the rib cage arch kind of pushing forward and then, you know, the midsection kind of um, sort of stretching between uh, down from the rib cage. But then it would be nice to see the same thing on the pelvis, just a little bit of the pelvis sticking out. Then that rear leg, there's a big flow down that leg and you kind of straightened it up. And if anything, we want to exaggerate that. So bring back that curve for the leg. That's a nice big flow for that leg. Down that arm, I felt like there was some nice, these kind of opposing curves or cascading curves, which you could bring out down both arms. Um, so that's just a little idea. On the other pose, I felt like you could have brought things in on the torso more. You know, that was the big thing in that pose was the, the rib cage coming on this angle, the pelvis coming back. It's a very beautiful angle and I felt like you could have sharpened that up. And then the, her butt crack has shifted off to become quite central and that's something that we often do. The, uh, if the pose is kind of rotated to our eyes a bit, so we can see one side more than the other, we'll often try and centralize the things, make it too uh, straight on and symmetrical. So don't do that. Um, you know, try and keep that kind of rotation. In the pose. So these were Alma's drawings. And again, I just love to see how Alma is pushing, really pushing into the things that we talked about, finding these curves, looking behind the reality of the pose and instead finding the movement and gesture behind it. And the thing that I kind of felt was just slightly lost was a little bit of a sense of the structure. Um, I kind of lost some of the pelvis again being there. I, I do sense uh, a little bit of the rib cage, but you know, the rib cage not not quite, not quite got the form on the rib cage, not getting feeling much of the pelvis. So just little lines to indicate that. Um, and again, some of these kind of cascading curves or opposing curves down the arms, which I really like. Um, and then kind of pushing into that, you got the angle on that leg, but maybe you could push into the, uh, the flow, the big S curve down the front of the leg. Although I think actually you did really get that quite well. And then similarly on the other one, bring out the butt and the pelvis on a sharp angle and don't kind of make the butt really straight on and centralize the, the butt crack, but allow it to be a little bit off center. Um, but, you know, great job. I really like the one, you know, that kind of gargoyle pose that, that Saturn did. Um, I really love the drawing that you did on, on that one. And actually all the drawings, I mean, the, the main feedback is lovely lovely uh, balance between structure and gesture, lovely exaggerations and really good job on just going for it. So, so the next one is Quinn. Quinn did our course last year. Does a great job with everything. Gesture, structure, proportion, um, simplification. Uh, but I did think that some of the curves were, could have been kind of flowing together a bit more, flowing into each other, kind of giving more momentum to the flow. You know, sometimes one way I like to think about this is how would water run through these curves? If you had two symmetrical curves, then the water would just kind of go, right? But when you have a beautiful like cascading uh, curves that kind of flow together, the water's gonna rush through that and speed up if anything. So I think Quinn could do maybe a little bit with some of these thighs in that area, but I'm really kind of nitpicking to be honest. But the main thing I thought was more the line quality. When you do a line with your whole arm with confidence, the line itself has movement and flow in it because Quinn already knows where, what line to put down. So now it's a matter of making the line itself beautiful. So David is getting in, is simplifying things down well and getting in some nice curves. David has a couple of tendencies. And when you have tendencies like Often, I think I found that the heads were enlarged on David's drawings and the legs were a bit short, which is actually a really common one. That's always great because that means that you can fix like 
big things in your drawings just by fixing those couple of tendencies. So that's what I did. I shrank the head a little bit, extended the legs, also brought that leg back. You know, a lot of people straightening up that leg. That leg is on a big, nice curve. So let's lean into that. Let's exaggerate that. Definitely don't straighten that one out. Um, but I noticed that on a couple of David's drawings. And so it tended to be the same thing, to elongate the legs and shrink the head. And then, interestingly, Richard Powell said that's what he likes to do. He likes to lean into that. And what's interesting is the things that Richard Powell exaggerates are the opposite of things that I've noticed a lot of people do when they're starting out. So obviously, if there is a strong, if there's a strong angle on the torso, he exaggerates it. A lot of people when starting out will reduce it. And so by learning from him, we might like get to about right. Like our tendency is to reduce it. His tendency is to exaggerate it. So if we learn from him, we might get somewhere in the middle and be just about right. And it's the same with the shrinking the head and elongating the legs. And then these were Leslie's drawings. And Leslie did a good job pushing into exaggeration and simplifying. I actually think Leslie could push further, make a sharper angle on the torso, push the torso in more and then let it come out again more. Push that leg back and let things flow from all the way from the torso and the pelvis all the way down that leg and let it come back, don't straighten it out. But lovely job, everyone here has done such a good job. I hope you guys don't mind that I did this sitting out in the park with the dog, but it's just too sunny not to. This week coming up, we're gonna start, we've got a couple of days just thinking more about gestural curves um, and about a little bit about mindset. And then on day 10, we're gonna start with Lane Brown, which is, I know a lot of you guys are looking forward to that and super excited about that. So I'll see you guys back here tomorrow. And you know what? I just wanna say thank you all for making this such a fun experience so far. You can find your uh, practice session at vimeo.com slash crocky cafe. And thank you to Vimeo for being cool with life drawing. So yeah, see you guys tomorrow.